We have now reached the 505th anniversary of the Reformation. There are many who criticize the reformers today, and not that they got every single thing right, but yet these men risked and even gave their lives to bring the church back to the five solas, that we are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, by scripture alone, to the glory of God alone. These bold men stood up to the Roman Catholic Church and risked their lives to expose the heresies being taught and the abuses that were being done. Today, Pope Francis is making a concerted effort to undo the Reformation. Whether this is done via blatant ecumenical unity or churches simply allowing false doctrine and woke liberalism to corrupt and destroy them from within, the counter-reformation agenda is well underway. Liberal political narratives, scenes like this in churches, liberation theology, social justice warriors, mysticism and more. The Pope is quite intentionally meeting and unifying with so many prominent figures outside of the broader Christian umbrella, opening a huge interfaith compound in the United Arab Emirates. But why is this happening? Well, some believe the feet of the prophetic statue in the book of Daniel signifies a revived Roman Empire in the last days. If this be the case or not, we can certainly see through the trajectory of history exactly why we need to continue the protest from the roads that have led to Rome. And I would say that the one big dividing line is what I would call evangelical or non-evangelical, or if you like, evangelical and more Catholic. This mechanical attempt today to, to, to produce one world church is to me something that's quite impossible. But they must come together, surely. Well, why? I mean, in other words, you were suggesting obviously that the Protestant Reformation was a tragedy. It breaks your heart to see what happens when the Roman Church is accepted as a genuine church. Roman Empire was working through the papacy to control people and obviously they kept them in the dark in regard to you know not teaching them the Holy Scripture not teaching them the Word of God and that's how they had their control over people by keeping them blinded and in the dark in regard to the Word of God the true gospel of Jesus Christ they created a system of control and that system of control was the Catholic Church. It's a counterfeit church. Really, it's a counterfeit Christ. And all of the doctrines, all of the teachings really were against true Christianity. But when the Protestant Reformation happened, they created the Jesuit order to remove the Reformation, to counter and attack the Reformation. The Jesuits were the foremost in the Counter-Reformation and they set about successfully reconverting people from the Christian faith back to Romanism. Back to Romanism. So really they counterfeited Christianity and they controlled Christianity and they ruled over the kings of the earth. That really is mystery Babylon. Let me say this right now. I am not against Catholics. I am not against Catholics. But what we have is a mystery Babylonian religion. It's mystery Babylon the Great. What I mean by that is 
there is a direct connection between Egypt and Greece and Rome walking through the papacy is a continuation of mystery Babylonian doctrines I mean you have Mary as a co-mediatrix right holding Christ well it's not Christ it's Horus brought forth it's mystery Babylon it's the worship of the Queen of Heaven really it's Samarimus in Nimrod Babylonian Luciferian doctrine so on the one hand they want to destroy Christianity but on the other hand they want to control Christianity so that is what's been happening here the papacy has created a false gospel to keep people in the dark to keep them blinded and then they bring in a counterfeit Christianity a false gospel that ultimately brings them under the control of the Pope which is also a type of Pharaoh but they bring everyone everyone under the control of the Pope which is really the Roman Empire Caesar you know and the papacy is well Caesar's palace really I finally woke up I finally woke up and I can see the truth exposing the Jesuits for years they are under control of very very powerful Roman bloodlines from the very beginning of course from the very beginning of the Jesuit order they were controlled by Roman bloodlines and that's what's in control here and they are satanic they are Luciferian at the high levels they are Luciferian they are Babylonian what they did was they brought the nations of the earth under the control of the bishops and cardinals and priests to really control the nations of the earth but also blind them and keep them in the dark in regard to the true gospel of Jesus Christ so the Roman Empire bloodlines were in control of the Catholic Church and they were really controlling the monarchs because when you control a monarch you control that nation that's it period you control that nation but listen all of this goes back to Rome it goes back to the Roman Empire and you know these knighthoods are very very powerful very powerful in regard to the structure I do believe that Pope Francis is the general of the Jesuits of Rome I do believe that but it goes back to the Roman Empire it goes right back to the ancient Roman Empire and these high bloodlines they created the Catholic Church to control Christianity to destroy Christianity really all across the earth and that really is the truth I'm sure that this revelation will surprise many people but I have to bring it out I have to remember it's the Roman Roman Catholic Church the ancient Roman bloodlines of Rome and they use that to control the monarchs of the earth keep people blinded really and in the dark in regard to the holy scriptures they withheld that they would not preach or teach that so they brought a counterfeit gospel and what they did was they want everyone to be subject to the Pope of Rome and he had authority to excommunicate people from heaven itself he could bind and loose if you did not submit to his cardinals or bishops or priests you would be excommunicated from heaven well that is not what Jesus Christ taught Jesus Christ taught that on this rock I will build my church and that was that he was the Christ the son of the living God and the gates of hell Hades will not prevail against it and Jesus said on this rock I will build my church well of course the papacy used that and abused that and twisted that 
to teach that. If you don't submit to the pop of Rome, then you will be excommunicated. So, it was just a way of controlling people, really, for generations and generations and generations. The high Roman bloodlines of Italy, they created the Jesuit order. Look, go to the church of the Jesuit. Go to the church of the Jesuit in Rome. The mother church of the Jesuits, right? Atop of that, atop of it, you'll see the Farnese bloodline. What does that reveal to you? It goes back to nobility of Rome. And the Jesuits really went in there to just overthrow nations. Overthrow nation after nation after nation. I am revealing the heart of this, the core of this, the true conspiracy, right? And of course we had the Crusades with the Knights Hospitaller of St. John and the Templars and so on. Napoleon Bonaparte himself, he said that the general of the Jesuits was no mere father abbot of a monastery, but a general of an army. We have the creation of Nazism. I don't feel this is the same thing. You guys have heard me say this many times before, but I'll say it again, because it's worth saying, really. Adolf Hitler said that, I can see in Himmler, our Ignatius of Loyola, but it goes back to the Roman Empire. It goes back to Rome and the Roman bloodlines. And of course the papacy is mystery Babylon because you just see the obelisk and the dome of the papacy. And of course, you know, Capitoline Hill in Washington comes from Capitoline Hill in Rome. And you have the obelisk there. So it's the same control. It's just, it's just the Roman Empire continued all across the earth from the creation of the papacy to attack Christianity and then to ultimately bring in false gospel to blind and keep people in the dark. In 1872, Charles Spurgeon said, the modern spirit mutters, we are all right, every one of us. He who says yes is right and he who says no is also right. Well, I am of opinion that if a man is a Muslim, or a Catholic, or a Mormon, or a dissenter, if he is sincere, he is all right. They do not quite include devil worshippers, thugs, and cannibals yet, but if things go on, they will accept them into the happy family of the broad church. Such is the talk and cant of this present age, but I bear my witness that there is no truth in it, and I call upon every child of God to protest against it, and, like Moses, to declare that he can have no complicity with such a confederacy. <laughs>